This is an Abbott Downing stagecoach. Abbott Downing was a manufacturer back in Concord, uh, New Hampshire, and this is a mud wagon. Now if we take a look at the stagecoach, they call it a Concord. Uh, you can tell that it's a Concord coach by the way it's built. It has a teardrop shape or an egg shape. It's rounded here in the front. It's rounded in the back. It's a little more luxurious than we have on the mud wagon. And we have what's called a Thoro brace. This is the suspension of the coach itself. And this suspension runs from here all the way to the back on each side and it makes it more comfortable for the horses and that's the reason that it was put on there but it also helped the passengers. Now the passengers can rock back and forth or side to side. Well guess what happens? Motion sickness. It's like riding in a car when you're a little kid in the back seat and you have a problem with the motion of the vehicle. Well people in those days got motion sickness also. Uh, this is a not it, it's an authentic coach but it was made for the film industry it's, it's made for six people to ride three in the back three in the front if they wanted to put in more people they could put a bench in here with no back on it and they could put three more so that would be nine in the coach if need be they could put another nine people on top with luggage. So that's what they sat on. They didn't have benches and uh, that was a pretty dangerous thing for the simple reason that it made the coach top heavy and in a lot of cases they rolled over on their side and there were injuries. So the uh, uh, driver and then we had what was called shotgun but in the passenger uh, uh, stagecoaches they didn't have a shotgun because they weren't carrying a strong box. If they were carrying a strong box that had valuables in it, such as money or, or gold or silver, it went in this boot up underneath the seat. They'd either put it here or they could put it in the boot that's in the back. And we've got a, a boot back here. But usually when they had the valuables, they put it in the front. You can see there's leather curtains on this, so it had some luxury to it, but can you imagine traveling in something like this, let's say in the winter time? If you're going down the Canado Gray, you're talking about 49 switchbacks, and this would be pulled by a, a, a team of six horses, and a six horse hitch was needed to negotiate the Canado grade. Well, one of the problems that they had in the wintertime when it rained, it was very muddy and the mud was pretty deep. What they had to do, the, br the brake that's on here was not sufficient enough or wasn't strong enough to hold the wagon back. So what they did is that they would run a chain from this wheel through to the other wheel and lock them together where it skidded down the Caneo grade and that way it did not have a tendency to run over the horses. Treated the horses just as much and as well as he did the passengers. Uh, now you can tell this is from the film industry because back in those days they didn't have malgahyde, they didn't have carpeting, and they didn't have those kinds of ends. From the stagecoach end they would go over the hill, over the Caneo grade to what was called Springville and there is a new overpass and exit at Springville which is just on the west side of Camarillo and that was the way station there then they would change horses get something to eat if they had the time to eat go to the restroom and continue on to Ventura now they had to negotiate the uh, Santa Clara River there was no bridges in those days so what they had to wait for is when the river was down. In the winter time it was running pretty strong and there were no stages through that area at that, at that time. Now Once, did they use mostly stages or uh, mud wagon? Uh, they used mostly stages in this, this area. 
the mud wagon. Now you can tell that it's a mud wagon because it's more angular. It's not rounded like a Concorde coach. Uh, it's very sturdy. It has a suspension system, leaf springs both sides, front and back. And again, that was for the comfort of the horses, but the passengers were able to benefit from it also. Uh, the mud wagon will haul nine passengers. Uh, they couldn't put anybody on top because of the way it's constructed. But this is kind of a mud wagon that's on the uh, small side, I would say, because they make mud wagons just as big as Concord coaches. Now, why would somebody want a mud wagon versus a stage a stagecoach, a Concord coach? It came down to money. Concord coach was fifteen hundred dollars. This was five hundred dollars. So you could buy three of these to one of these. So. That was a big savings, and back in those days, that was a lot of money. We're talking about back in the 1870s. Uh, again, it would be if it was working in the uh, Canelo Valley or out of Los Angeles over to Ventura, uh, it would have been a, uh, a six-horse hitch because of the terrain that we have, and the uh, Canelo grade is what really dictates how many horses they would use. <coughs> so. The reason that the driver was on the right side is that's where the brake was. So they put the brake on the right side for the driver because most drivers were uh, right-handed. Now, if you take a look at the lines, it'll show you he had reins between every finger on both hands while he carried a whip or a quirt in his